A uh, common question I get from students is, what do I do when it comes to forming a low poly character and the eye socket and the eyeball and how they sort of like uh, interact with each other? So hopefully up until this point, you have your high poly and you have separated it from your eyeball. So that involves having a sphere and Z brush and then sculpting things like eyelids around that. Looking at this character, um, there is a bit of a sculpted eyelid and a certain amount of thickness uh, with a basic kind of dyno mesh cap as we're not too concerned about the back of the eye because it's uh, going to have an eyeball covering that. So what does that mean in terms of topology? So up until now, you've probably created something similar to this and then hit the eye and then gone, okay, I don't know how to do that. Let's look at um, a Dave tiff, I guess. So isolating that, if you ever want to isolate something, um, I've just gone to object and click control one. That's going to isolate the object. So we've got an eye gap here. That's totally fine in terms of the engine. It's not going to break anything. Um, one issue that we might have is that if the eyeball is moving around and then coupled with animation, it might show these these gaps and they won't look so good. Um, if you imagine like the Assassin's Creed memes and things like that. So uh, if I go to edge, I can fill this by first double clicking the edge. And that's going to select the entire edge loop. If I then click shift, right click, come down to something called fill hole. So that's going to fill the hole. That's what we're looking for, um, although Maya's sort of making up where it's going to put tries. The games engine is going to do the same. Uh, so we ideally want to direct that end on ourselves. So collecting the face, um, shift, right click, and then come to something called poke face. That's going to insert a medium vertice in the center that we can start to manipulate. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the guide is off because we don't want this to be snapping to the guide. I'm going to select that vert and as if these were all kind of uh, rubber bands, I can drag it all the way to the back. We're not too concerned about deformation when it comes to UV. That's going to be a very small island. There's not going to be much texture information. Could be even just black. Uh, this is just thinking purely about the eye geometry and how that's going to interact with the sphere. So once that's done, um, that's perfectly fine. And we have the edge for the inside of the eyelid. When it comes to uh, the eyeball itself, we usually in games just use a polygon sphere. It's not going to be the traditional um, baking down a high poly to a low poly. One of the features with a sphere like this is, while it has a certain amount of try counts, um, it only really affects the silhouette. So you can see the jaggedness. When we look at it on face value, it does look like a, a very smooth sphere, thanks to um, just like general shading, shading parameters and soft edges. So with this, it's simple as basically um, positioning the eyeball where you think the eye should be. Um, so that's seating it in its sockets. Hopefully, uh, you should have an eye guide for this from ZBrush. So you would have sculpted your eyelid around that, that orb, and then used that as a reference to place um, this low poly geometry. So selecting the two together, we could, they are two separate objects when it comes to an export. You can either select them both, export it, and they're going to be combined, um, or you can combine them now. I usually like to leave it separated and then name them individually. Um, so if this eyeball was a little bit smaller, oh, let's get the eyeball. You can see how the geometry that we've made on the inside, uh, maybe if this was moving around, we're not going to get some open cast errors and, and open errors. So that's how you start to uh, build up the eyeball. Once you've placed one, um, you're going to be coming to mirror, so up here in the polygon me menu, and then clicking this one, mirror. Depending on when you place, where it placed, so on the right side it's going to mirror perfectly. Uh, you might want to toggle uh, cut geometry on or off just to see if your thing's not being affected. Uh, it should look something like this, or maybe change the direction uh, to a plus or a minus. That's going to affect where it, where it pops up. Um, once you've done with that eyeball, you know, you could take it into Substance or uh, Photoshop, make sure it's unwrapped, maybe paste an eyeball onto that or an iris. Um, nowadays with current gen stuff, we're thinking about more advanced eye geometry. So how an eye is actually comprised, it's things like the iris and the outer, um, outer layers, but that's probably worth uh, a separate video in itself. So um, as an introduction or as a first year, you can kind of be focusing on this sort of setup. So that's how you think about making eyes in Maya.